So you wanna be a real estate investor, but where do you start? How do you know what information and sources to trust? That's where I come in. I'm Johnny Catani, and this is the Investor Relations Real Estate Podcast. Hey guys, real quick, before we start, go to investwithkatani.com and download my free ebook, Is Commercial Real Estate Recession Proof? Now to today's show. What's up, guys? And welcome to another episode of the Investor Relations Real Estate Podcast. I'm your host, Johnny Catani, and I'm joined today by Matt Faircloth. What's Matt up, Jonathan? <laughs> Matt has been a full-time <laughs> investor for 15 years. In that time, he has successfully completed projects involving dozens of fix and flips, office buildings, single family homes, and apartment buildings. He has a mass portfolio of over a thousand plus units and raised tens of millions of equity for these real estate projects in both debt and equity positions for these deals from passive investors. Matt, welcome to the show. Thank you, Jonathan. Uh, it's, been, it's an honor to be here, man. And sorry, I, I jumped the gun. I'm just excited. That's all. That's all I am, man. You know, just happy to be here. We love it. No, yeah. excitement is always welcome on the show. Uh, that's why I love the live intro. You know, you get that organic, mm -hmm. organic excitement, organic. Just hop uh, it in. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Well, we uh, are, have a great show for everyone today. Very excited for it. Um, before we get into our how to step by step, uh, let's start at the beginning here. Give us kind of the uh, high level how you uh, got into all of this. You know what, Jonathan, one of these days I'm going to get in here and I'm, I'm on, on somebody's show and I'm going to completely make up a story on how I first got started. <laughs> you know, I'm going to be like, here, I just thought of this. Like, here, I'll, I'll do my pretend makeup story. So Jonathan, I was, uh, I was driving around and I was really hungry. So I stopped in for a sandwich at a local convenience store and I decided, you know what I do, what I'm decided to do? And I said, you know, I'm just going to play the lottery today. Uh, and I bought myself a $1 lottery ticket and I played my birthday uh, along with my wife's birthday in combination. And guess what? It won. And I won $10 million in the lottery and I just put that money to work in real estate. And here we are today. Wow. Right? Yeah. It's incredible. <laughs> and that's our how-to guide. Not, Thanks I, so much for listening. Say, and, that's, and that's the show <laughs> for the day. Play the lottery when you're hungry. Yeah, no. Um, no, I mean, that, that is not what happened. Um, so what uh, the, the way I really got started is that uh, I went to school for engineering and uh, at Virginia Tech and met um, a, years later, got a, got a job in engineering uh, as a traveling sales rep selling engineering, engineered equipment uh, to fact to local factories and things like that in my local area, just outside of Philadelphia, um, met my wife uh, and, and she got me to read Rich Dad, Poor Dad while we were dating. Uh, and that completely opened up my eyes to possibilities of, of what else is out there and what the world could look like with, with uh, business ownership and entrepreneurship as, as the forefront and buying assets and helping others do the same. So that's what I decided to dedicate my, my career to. Uh, and I left that day job when my wife and I got married because she had agreed and her and I had drank the same Kool-Aid together. So she had agreed to go and get a, a well-paying day job while I built our business. Um, and it's been off to the races since that was a long time ago. It was 20, it was 16 years ago. Um, and, uh, we bumped into a lot of walls, made it through the last downturn, um, made it through a lot of upturns and downturns and lefts and right turns and everything like that. And, uh, have, have been primarily a residential real estate owner since then. We did not just go and take some run to the back of the room guru course and get involved in multifamily real estate and cross our fingers and hope that it goes well. We have been mostly residential, but a lot of, we did a lot of small real estate, um, over the years and worked our way into larger and larger deals as we grew. So, uh, so that's that got started in Trenton, New Jersey and are now active in four States. Wow. Love that. Uh, shout out to New Jersey. I grew up right near Atlantic city. So, uh, hey, hey. a little bit that south, means you're lucky, right? Absolutely. Get it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Atlantic city did not do well in that, uh, said downturn, but you know what? Uh, it's, crawled yeah, back, they haven't upturned yet from the downturn <laughs> yeah right atlantic if there is a rock bottom atlantic city sure found it and uh, it's they're, still they're 2009 in atlantic city <laughs> yeah right <laughs> time froze in 2009 yeah i will it, it'll work its way out if, you know it's funny in ac they uh the stockton university has made major investments there. I know, I know we're rabbit holing and all that, but hey, that's what podcasts are for, right? So um, Stockton University has become a major player in the Southern part of AC on the line, on the border between AC and Ventnor. 
Um, and they, they've made major, they tried Atlantic or uh, Stockton tried to buy the showboat casino. Oh, wow. Yeah. And they, wouldn't, they, they got roadblocked on doing that. Like, why would you stop that? That's such a great, a great play for that site to kind of mix it up a little bit. Um, and that <laughs> those college kids sure would have a lot of fun. Absolutely. Yeah, right on the board what better but, way to learn what better way right. to teach your business students about business than uh, right. operating a casino where it could go wrong you know <laughs> um yeah but they they ended up uh doing a big uh venue down the side the, the central part of ac still has a long way to go where a lot of the casinos used to be right. um and some of the casinos are coming back and like hard rocks coming in so, but there it's it's a typical model of a town rebirthing and if i had like lots of cojones and was just getting going I probably would try and make a play in Atlantic city. Cause not for nothing, where's it got to go? I mean, you know, it's got nowhere to go, but it's a beach town, you yeah. know, it, it, it's, it, it's an interesting city. It's a beach town with legalized gambling in New Jersey um, with, 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 uh, with, with a lot of room to go and, and all that. So I personally, I, I think it could be a winner, not, a not, a, not, not a horse I'm going to bet on because I got other, I, I got lighter lifts to deal with, but if you're brand new, in the world of real estate and you want to, if you want to get in on the ground floor, certainly there, uh, certainly that look at Atlantic city. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. This yeah. is going to be a step-by-step -step guide to how to buy a casino. <laughs> it could be work your way up. Right. That, that could be like, what if like, a monopoly, there's like the greenhouse, the red hotel, and then the purple casino, <laughs> right. <laughs> that would you have to buy sweet. four hotels. You could buy a big purple casino. Right. You know? Yeah, yeah, that is uh, the irony. There is that uh, the original Monopoly game is based off of the streets in Atlantic I City. So I know, I know. Um, yeah, that I would was, be. I was going to go there, but you went there first, and that's exactly fun, I love Monopoly. But fun twist on Monopoly because they have that, like the kids version. Don't they have like a politically politically correct version now too? So why not? There's the many versions. Version? There's like a Star Wars version. There's a Virginia Tech version of it where I went to school. There's all kinds of different. Yeah, they figured out like, hey, well, let's just give the streets different names. And, and all that. And it's all still greenhouses and red hotels and all that, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. So Great are you, a, are you a, uh, are, are, when you play monopoly, do you go after what color is your target? Like what, what do you wish that you own all three of? Are you a, are you a Tennessee, New York? And, uh, and the other one that I can't remember the name of the orange, are you the oranges? Is it Baltic are you, are you part a boardwalk of guy? What are you at? Yeah, I mean, listen, of course, we all want a uh, boardwalk and park place, but I love the railroads as well. Big railroad yes. guy. Yeah, that's a gift uh, that keeps on giving. Yeah, it's the out. underrated. It's the underrated asset in there, you know, the cash uh, cow. you get four of them and two yeah. bucks every time yeah. Twitter bucks. It's a cash cow every time I am a um, I am a St. James place in the purples. Yep. And the and the oranges, those kind of along that along the hundred dollar per house uh, range there, you know. So that that's where I've been. That, that's where I, I tend to target. So I love it. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, put in the comments uh, what what your monopoly strategy is. I want to know. Yeah, some people are Mediterranean Baltic, as you can get it right back out. It's almost like the monopoly board is D class housing, C class housing, B class housing, and A class housing. Like we could break it down into housing classes on the monopoly board. You know, see how that so. works. Yeah, almost like real estate investing has been around for hundreds of right. years. Yeah, um, almost like people have done this for years and years and years, right? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, that's a perfect segue into what yeah. we're going to talk about. We're going to teach you, and by we, I mean Matt. Well, going I'm to, not going to make you join me too. It's going to be fun. We are yeah. going to give a step-by-step -step guide for those who are just getting into this, mm -hmm. uh, how to get into it. So I'll give you, give you the mic here. Um, I got one. Thanks. Yep. <laughs> um, so what, um, what, uh, what I would say, because it's something you and I talked about offline, right? Um, uh, there's not enough scripts and play by plays on what to do to get started in real estate investing. And I'm talking about like, you know, business strategies and that kind of stuff. Not like, you know, should I have an LLC? Short answer to that one. Yes. Um, and move on from there because I get so many questions on my YouTube channel and questions on bigger pockets or whatever. Like, Hey, Matt, do I really need an LLC and how do I set one up? Or should I do a series LLC or that LLC or whatever? Two answers to that talk to a lawyer and yeah. yes, you should have an LLC. Um, right. Uh, but neither Jonathan nor I are attorneys. And so you should go to a, an attorney to set up your foundation of your business, Absolutely. um, in that, but but then once you've done that, let's go through the steps to success of, of getting started in real estate investing. Um, and 
I told you, John, I warned you, uh, Jonathan, I was going to do a couple forks in the road. You know, I remember I grew up with these choose your own adventure books where it's like, if you take the left road, you will turn to page 10. If you take the right road, you'll turn to page 327. Loved those you know? books. I did too. Yeah. It's funny. I used to always fast food. Did you always like look ahead to see like, well, I got to see what's going to happen. Right. But it's the worst. Like, oh, if you take the left road, turn to page 325 and you go to page 325 and it's like, you fall off a cliff, the end. You know, right. it's like the book is over. Okay. I guess we're going back. You know? Yeah. Okay. Um, perfect. Hey guys, don't go that way. Go the other way. Yeah. Don't get, yeah, don't go left. Um, okay. So the first fork in the road that you will need to address in real estate investing is, do I want to do this thing full time or do I want to may, be a passive investor that I want to build up and, and just build an alternative way to wealth, right? The, the Robert Kiyosaki method. Robert didn't get into this, but what he, when he really started talking about passive income and that kind of thing, he should have been talking about, here's your way to wealth through passive income while you maintain your job. And the big question there is, do you want to make real estate investing your job or do you want to keep your job that you like and or maybe even that you like enough or you make a, a ton of money doing it if you're making tons and tons of money um, in your day job, then maybe you can find out things you love about it that you can take those that tons and tons of money, sling it at a real estate investing and retire 15 years earlier than you would be able to if you didn't do that, right? Maybe Absolutely. that's a path. So bottom line, do you want to be active or do you want to go passive? And I can we can unpack that a little bit, Jonathan, or do we could just make that the question? Yeah. So um, what I would say is if you love, like Matt said, if you love your job or, or if you make a ton of money and that's what you love about it and you want to stay there, you know, maybe you have options that haven't invested yet, whatever it may be. Um, and you want to be passive. Uh, let's give like a quick, you know, guide to that, but let's, let's maybe choose the active road. Uh, yeah. Let's take the conversation. Right, right, right. right. I, I, and we, cause there's a lot, there's a lot to unpack on the, um, on the path, on the active thing. Um, I mean, if you have a job you love, or if you make a ton of money doing it, or if you went to school for like 10 years after high school to have that job, like let's say, let's just say for fun, you're a cardiologist, right? Yep. Thank <laughs> you, you know? for doing that, by the way. Yeah. And thank you for keeping all mine and Jonathan's hearts healthy and everyone <laughs> else's hearts healthy, right? We need, big, we need big hearts in the world, right? So thank you for, for all the training that you did to be a cardiologist. And we hope you keep doing that. That's mine and Jonathan's public service announcement for the day. Cardiologists <laughs> do not quit your job. Keep doing that. Um, so if that's what you do, you went to school for a long time and you probably make a lot of money for doing it, right? Even though you got a bunch of student loan debt, guess what? You can pay all that off. You're good. Um, you maybe don't want to leave that job either for the money that you make doing it or for the passion you have for it. Um, <clears throat> either one of those two things or both maybe tell you you, should, you don't want to quit. And so this, that path just looks like vetting um, operators, knowing enough about markets to choose um, the right operators that are active in the markets you want to be involved in, uh, doing lots of research, reading Brian, Bar Brian blah, 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 Matt Talking, take two, reading mm -hmm. Brian Burke's book, The Hands-Off Real Estate Investor, The Hands-Off Investor, um, about how to be a passive investor doing mm -hmm. things like that and just researching and picking the right horses that can put in their time while you put in money. Okay. Um, that's that path. And you can recycle the cash and make money and, and keep doing your day job and keep pushing as much as you can into your, into, into passive investing as best you can. And like I said, maybe you hit retirement early, maybe you're able to build up a big fat nest egg that when you do retire, you'll just have more of it. It's up to you. Um, th that's that path. It's easy path. The other active side of it is where you're putting in time uh, the, and, and maybe some of your own money, hopefully some of your own money too. Um, and maybe that time originally looks like you hold down a day job because if you don't have a situation like I did where you've got a spouse that's able to put in time for a day job to produce money to pay your bills because I don't, let's not forget that, Jonathan, that there is monthly obligations. You know, your bank's not going to take an IOU on your mortgage, you know? No, neither is your landlord. Uh, neither is the getting, grocery store. Neither is the grocery. You can't just walk in and say, listen, I'm compensating in high fives today for groceries. <laughs> you know, it's, I've got enough high fives for everybody. Everybody, come on. You know, and I'm going to take those, these cantaloupes for a high five. Um, so you, uh, you need to pay money to do things. And you might, need, you might need money to keep your trains running on time. And so two choices there, get another fork in the road. Uh, have a spouse that's got a full-time day job uh, that that's able to uh, earn while you build the business. That's number one. 
Uh, if you don't have a spouse or if your spouse doesn't want to, is not able to do that, then you should likely get a career in the real estate business somewhere to where you can be around the business of real estate. Okay. I had a buddy who uh, worked for a leasing operation. He leased like 10 apartments a month. Um, and that was enough to keep his trains running on time while he slowly built up some rentals for himself. Being a real estate agent is a phenomenal way to be around real estate investing while you also make some money to pay your bills. Okay. And then, you know, you build up the cash flow stream and the stream turns into a, into a creek and the creek turns into a river. And before you know it, you got a big flow of cash flow. And my buddy that used to lease apartments for people and he paid his bills doing that. That was like 10 years ago. That guy now owns 200 units all himself, no investors. Right. Wow. Um, and he makes a lot of money on those 200 units. And he's got a staff that runs those for him. So there is, there are, you know, rungs on the ladder you can climb here uh, if you're willing to air quote, do whatever it takes. That's probably the pact you can make with yourself that I'll do whatever it takes. If I, if I had to do this over again and it required this, you know, I would hold down a job that it's a job I didn't like. I'd bag groceries, I'd wait tables, whatever, so that I can, you know, maybe a job that's got alternative time commitments that I can be available Monday through Friday, nine to five, when I can talk to brokers, talk to agents and pursue deals mm -hmm. and then work nights uh, to pay my bills. That's something yeah. I would do. I'll pause if you'd like. No, absolutely. You make a great yeah. point. Service industry is great for that. Um, for sure. Anything that we service can industry time. or real estate agency to where you yeah. can work as much as you want to for your book of business and, um, and be around it. So you, I think you either choose to be around real estate on it, on the day, on the daily. And then it's like, okay, seller comes up, wants to sell their house. I will list this on the MLS. Seller comes up, wants to sell their house. I've seen agents do this. And this is totally kosher. You can do this. You can say, okay, seller, I will do one of two things. You tell me which one. I will buy your house. And here's my number. We'll close in two weeks, right? No inspections, no contingencies, no nothing. You, you take what stuff you want, leave what stuff you don't, right? Literally. You got a place to go. You want to move in with your kids. You want to move in, move into your next house. I will buy your house. This has, this works on houses that are dilapidated or that need some work. Right. Um, and so I will buy your house. Here's my no questions asked number. I'll take it as is just give me the keys. Okay. Or I will tramp 20, 30 people through here. Um, and you will get your best number. You can, they were going to make you offers with, with contingencies. They're going to want to bring in building inspectors. They're going to want to bring in, have finance contingencies. Um, they're going to want to, have a list of stipulations and you're going to have to have a lot of people walking through your house and we better clean this joint up. You know, it's going to have to get a lot cleaner than it is right now um, because it has to be the, the, the prettiest penny on the block. So you either do that and get the best number you can or sell it to me right now and take my number, you know, uh, and I've seen agents do that and you can do very well uh, doing it that way. So that's a way to get leads. Um, and th that is a road that you can take. Now I'm talking about investing in not Jonathan, not apartment buildings. And there actually are, it, it, there's a misunderstanding out there. There are other things you can invest in and other real estate classes of, of multi of, uh, of real estate that are not apartment buildings. You can actually make money investing in single family homes, duplexes, triplexes, those kinds of things. Absolutely. Um, the world has become so enamored with apartment building is the uh, apartment buildings is the only place to make money, but it's not true. You can make a lot of money investing in other stuff, you know? A thousand percent. I mean, I'm working on um, self storage right now. Yeah. So, and it is, but and that's awesome. And yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't, don't want. So. I don't. I don't want to say not that either, right? Um, but I firmly believe that those that are just getting started, um, I'll, let's do that path too. That's that's road number three. But um, you do not just getting started in real estate have to pursue large assets that have Facts. multiple commas in their purchase price. You know, a hundred percent. The it not be, it is, doesn't have to be self-storage like Jonathan's working on multi-million dollar assets or apartment buildings like I'm working on multi-million dollar assets. It can be a two hundred thousand dollar single family home, right? Absolutely. It can be. And you can make a lot of money doing that. And and it's and it's become a disregarded asset class these days. So riches in the niches and is observe the masses and do the opposite. If I were to get if I were to get started in real estate now, let's pause there. I'll yep. get back to my path to success here. But if I were to get started in real estate now, Jonathan, I probably would find an asset class that is disregarded. I, my company's too far down the road 
for multifamily. It's what we know how to do. It's what my company's known to do. And we might spur off into new asset classes in the future, but for the foreseeable future, that's what we're going to do is residential housing, right? right. Um, and it also ties into our company mission, which is to transform lives through real estate, right? Now, if I were to get, if I were to start this over again, I'd find something nobody else is paying attention to. Yep. You know, riches and, 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 and like just infiltrate that niche and be that niche expert. I would go, I, if I could start over, what would, what um, would you do? I would do the Burr method on duplexes, triplexes, quadplexes. For those that don't know, it's uh, what buy, uh, rehab, rent, repeat, right? Do I have mm -hmm. that in the correct, or correct order? Yep. Essentially, you let's just say a duplex, buy a duplex, live in one side, rent out the other. Ideally, that pays and covers your mortgage, um, maybe a little cash flow, but at least break even. And then, you know, you only have to live there for, the, for a year and then you can do it again and you kind of just rinse and repeat, right? You take out your equity, use it as a down payment for the next one, keep going. I have a good friend who does that and he's up to like, he does anything from a duplex to a fourplex because you can mm -hmm. get traditional financing and he's up to like 20 doors now mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. I think six years or so, you know, owns all of it, manages all of it. He's probably so got a full-time day would, job too. He's got a day job. A, yep. Yep. He's an engineer by trade. Um, so yes, I would, I, I would, that would be how I started. Over. And he's making thousands a month in cash flow Correct. while he has his full-time day job. Yep. That's not a bad gig, man. Nope. I mean, I know, all, I know everybody, everybody listening. I get it. You want to sit my ties on the beach in the next two months and retire. You want to, you want to invest in real estate because you hate your job. You want to buy apartment buildings because some guru I won't name told you that if you do this for a month or two, you'll be able to sip cocktails on the beach and retire. Right. I get that. I, tell me again with that guru that was talking to you, how much do they want for their program to teach you how to do that? It's probably at least 10,000. Right? right. Okay. Um, understand people that tell you this thing is easy is selling you something. Right. Um, and that and it's, it's not, it's, it's easy. It's a job. It's a grind, right. man. You know, and, and just, you know, real estate investing is, you know, it, it is a job and anybody that tells you it's not is trying to sell you something. Okay. So consider going the direction of like owning that it's going to be work and be choose what kind of work you want to do. You Absolutely. know, and Oh, um, by the way, as you develop and grow your portfolio, you can start to be a passive investor yeah. in these apartment deals and stay on that side of things while you're still building your residential portfolio. So yeah. you can play both sides. I have a lot of real estate brokers, real estate agents that invest with me. Um, in that because it's, they get it. Like, yeah, I, I've built a brand. I've built a funnel. I'm closing, like I'm, I'm selling five to six deals a, a, a week, you know, uh, you know, on, on listings. I'm, I, I got a cash machine here. Why would I walk away from that? You know, I want to just want to take some of the cash from the cash machine that I've built and funnel it into, into passive. Um, so, okay. Let's get back to, yep. What's our next that, step here. So we've decided yeah. what so you figured out class we want to do. Yeah. Um, and the one, the one thing that um, I had said before is if you want to do what Jonathan's doing or that I'm doing, like pursue larger asset classes with multiple commas and their purchase prices from Jump Street, um, then what you want to do is you want to work around that. Find someone who's doing it. Okay. Find an existing multifamily company. Find an existing self-storage company. Find an existing um, light industrial company that's buying and syndicating to investors, those types of assets. And find your way to add value to them and find your way to work underneath their umbrella and help them build their brand. And it might mean taking a job with their company, but they'll likely share upside with you. And you can right. learn the experience and commit to yourself that you'll do it for two to five years or whatever it is to learn the game and become great at it. And you've got that on your resume so that you can go forth and do it yourself. And these companies, the upside that I'm talking about, they can share big time upside with you if you help their company more success, to become more successful. Um, I don't think you're going to walk out of a day job, quit your day job today and put a hundred unit apartment building under contract in a couple months. Uh, again, gurus will tell you different, but I don't think that's true. Um, no. You can, you can do that, but you're going to end up giving away, you know, a lot of that deal um, to others. They're going to need to sponsor the deal, front the early money, do all the stuff that needs to get done. And you'll end up walking out of there with peanuts when you might as well learn all the ropes there is to know uh, on deals like this, and then take a lot of it down yourself when it's time for you to do it on your own. That's my, two. so the, those are the paths. Uh, we'll talk about next steps if you want. Yeah, absolutely. I, I couldn't agree more. And listen, yeah. if you do have 
the capital to get into a mentor group like he's talking mm-hmm. about, then do that. Absolutely. Yeah. We're not taking that away. I mean, that's what I did. Mm-hmm. You know, Reader's Digest version of me is I worked as a stockbroker for a long time, worked with high net worth people, uh, realized they all had real estate, realized I want to get into real estate, jumped right in. Well, went into tech, got laid off, jumped right into commercial real estate, joined a mentor group. And here we are now. So yeah. That's and also- mentor groups are different, right? Yes. I, when I when I talk about you know gurus selling something, I'm talking about like, hey, give me ten grand, and you can buy my you know my my low money you know, my my pr- my package to teach you how to buy an apartment building in the next thirty days, right? Okay, right. got it. Um, it's way harder than they, than they make it sound, uh, and everything like that. Um, and yet yeah, mastermind groups are really there. Really, what a, what a mastermind group and accountability group are there to do is to hold you accountable. So mm-hmm. if Jonathan and I'm an accountability group too. I'm, I'm in multiple. So if I walk in the door, um, I could walk in and say, uh, "Hey, I want to make five offers this week on some self storage centers." Jonathan can do the same thing. And then he's got people to say, "Okay, great. Let me check in with you by the end of the week. Say you did." And if he falters and doesn't do it, okay, great. What happened? Well, I did this, I got distracted, whatever. You can even have a little more tough love uh, mastermind groups that are like, okay, Jonathan, what do you like? Well, I like to play golf. Okay, go make three offers next week. And if you don't, you got to give me your golf clubs. You know, uh, I have one. It's a mastermind group where it was like, if you don't make the, if you, this was uh, on a physical challenge, which somebody else in my group. And they said, if you don't run 10 miles this week, then you have to write a check to your ex-girlfriend for $500. <laughs> right? <laughs> you know? That's amazing. I love that. <laughs> Isn't that awful? I'll talk about, I bet he ran 10 miles. He did, man. I bet he did a couple extra just for good measure, just to make sure. You know, he certainly did. Um, he certainly did. Because you know what it is? I don't want your golf clubs. I right. certainly don't want you to write a check to your ex-girlfriend. I want you to run the five miles or make those offers. I want you to achieve your goal. And if I got to create a little bit of pain to get you moving, then I will, you know, um, and everything like that. So the accountability groups are phenomenal. Uh, I know we're in tangential, but yeah. So, um, well, what's our next step? Yeah. The next step is you've choose, you've chosen how you to pay your bills. You've like allowed that to evolve into, um, you, you know, what, that's that's what time you have available okay so now let's talk about what you're going to do with that time and meaning like what are you going to pursue are you going to pursue burr strategy deals or if you're going to work for a larger outfit that's pursuing multifamily or whatever or whatever the kind of asset classes you want to get yourself into right um then your uh whoever you're working for uh working with will likely or hopefully help you develop that goal set what i'm getting at is you got to develop your goals and your business business plan to say, okay, I'm, if I'm the realtor, right, maybe fix and flip some burst strategy rentals is, is the angle of attack. Okay. Got it. Let's talk about that for a second. Um, I want to acquire, um, I want to complete three fix and flips for a profit of 30,000 per fix and flip um, in the, in the next year. I want to acquire three burst strategy deals in the next year. Um, so you put that down and again, be realistic. Those are realistic goals. What I just said, I think so. Um, what, what might be unrealistic is say, I'm going to complete 10 fix and flips and, you know, 30 burr strategy deals. Just think about like what team you'd need to have a place and what logistics and also envision what your life's going to look like while you implement these things. Are you going to be running around like a chicken and a head cut? Are you going to be in hell or are you going to be enjoying yourself? You know, while you, while you accomplish these things. So that's the business plan and the go- that's the goal. Sorry. That's the goal and what you want to accomplish. The next thing is the business plan. Okay. I want to flip three houses. Got it. Who's the contractor? Um, what neighborhood are they going to be in? You know, what, where am I, where am I farming for those three fix and flips that, that'll require a lot of research, maybe not months of research, but a little bit of Googling, a little bit of looking at maps around the world, around wherever you live. So if you live in Albuquerque, New Mexico, um, what neighborhood of Albuquerque is on the, is on the move right now? Um, that might make sense to do fix and flips or whatever it is, whatever your pursuit is, you're a new construction. Great. Look into that. And, who, and then how are we going to fund it? Um, don't know. Great. I love, I don't know. That mean, I, I don't know means you got to do research. You know, I don't know is a great answer to questions. That means I, I don't know should be followed up with, I don't know, but let me find out. Right. Look on bigger pockets, go reach out to people that are active in other areas that you might know of, or talk to people that are doing lots of fix and flip. How are you, how are you funding your deals? You know, 
those kinds of things. Develop the business plan on how you will get to those to get to those goals. I keep referring to do three fix and flips and three birth strategies, but it could just as easily be something else. It could be I want to do land development deals. You know, I want to do uh, I want to buy self storage, which Jonathan's doing, right? And hopefully you got some you do some higher ups and some mentors and some people pulling you up and helping you there. Uh, I want to build a wholesale business. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter what the mechanism is because I'm not here to poo poo anything. If it's real estate then it's great. If it's real estate, then I think you'll get there and you're in the right, you're in the right circles and all that. Absolutely. Yeah. So build the goals and the business plan for the first year, right? For the first, the next 12 months, build those things out. The business plan will likely have the requirement for a lot of things you don't have right now. Like, okay, I need a lender. Great. Go find it. And by when are you going to find it? And then you start breaking that business plan down into a timeline. So that's the third thing you need. You need, I'll, I'll go through one more time. Goals, what you want. Business plan is how you're going to get to those goals. And then a timeline is the implementation cycle that you're going to implement, that you're going to kick in uh, on how to get to that business plan executed. So if I'm at day one and I want to do all these flips and all these things, then I might not have my hard money lender or my private lender lined up to, to fund those things for me. And that's okay. Because that might mean I got to spend the next 30 days. Okay. In 30 days, I'm going to find two hard money lenders and one private investor and one bank. I'm going to have me face-to-face -face meetings or Zoom calls with them and I'll vet my network and I'll get my financials in front of them or whatever it is. So the first couple months of your timeline might look like laying the foundations, you know, and maybe looking at a few deals. And then the second half of it's going to be implementation, right? So, uh, and, and yet again, it could be in any kind of real estate vehicle that it is. Um, but goals, business plan, how you can implement the goals and then timeline. So you can hold yourself accountable, uh, to say, oh, you can just make sure you're on track, you know, cause without all that, you're just going to like crush your fingers and hope that these things come read a goal and crush your fingers and hope they come true. Right. Absolutely. And, yeah. and guys, the, the last part of that, which kind of piggybacks off the third step there, take action. Yes. Okay. You can write stuff down and read as many books as you want, but you got to take action. One thing, um, and listen, you don't have to, you don't need to join an accountability group to have people hold you accountable. One thing I've learned from a mentor is start saying it out loud. Tell your friends what you're going to do. Tell yes. your girlfriend, your mom, hey, mom, I'm going to talk to two lenders in the next two weeks. And then in two weeks, your mom can be like, hey, did you talk to two lenders? Right. Start saying it out loud and telling people and you'll automatically have an accountability group. Mm -hmm. that is asking you about it. And, you know, they're probably not going to be like, Hey, if you don't do it, you got to give me your golf clubs, but it, it gets it going in your head. Be like, off hey, of your mom, come take your golf clubs. <laughs> uh, your mom be like, you son of a gun. You didn't make those offers. Like you're going to yeah, give me writing that $500 check. Aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> you heard your mom tell you like, like, I still have her address. I like that girl, <laughs> you know, <laughs> should have married that one. You about I'll hand deliver that 500 check for you. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. But yeah, you, you can have, you know, and then it gets you in your head like, okay, cool. I know someone's going to ask about this. So I need it. I need to get it done. Any, anybody can be your accountability partner. Now, I mean, when you sign up for an accountability group, you know, um, there are different levels of accountability. There's different levels of support you're going to get. And also these are like, you know, air quote, high level people that all bought their way in to be in the group that you're in. And then sometimes money can be a good filter uh, for people that are serious. And so it creates a serious, a level of seriousness. Like, hey, I'm not here to screw around. I'm here to make it happen because I paid to be a part of this thing. So my money to be worth it. Right? right. But you don't have to do that. You can, and there's tons of value for it, but just as soon you could meet somebody at a local RIA, you could get your brother-in-law to do it because they love kicking your butt. You could get your best friend to do it. You could get anybody, like you said, your mama, whoever it is to go and uh, check in with you once a week. How are you doing on that goal? How are things going with that business? The worst thing you can do is to keep your goals and your aspirations to yourself. That's Agreed. the worst. You are selling yourself out if you do that, if I may. Right? Yeah. Self-discipline is the hardest mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. And the only way that I got it, and not that I'm any beacon of self-discipline by any means, but the only way is by literally having accountability partners. And it has forced me. And now, I mean, I still have an accountability group, but now I'm like, okay, I literally have to get this done. So yeah, yeah, well, you, you have, have to train yourself. You have to, 
I'm going to come get those golf clubs. Yeah, you know? right. Correct. And I have to keep that, the lights on. So I've it. chosen to make this my full-time job. So yeah, yeah, yeah. well, that's the, the problem is, is that a lot of people operate in life uh, that they want something, you know, like I, I, I want this, but there's a certain level of comfort they might have, you know, like, I, well, if I don't get there, if I don't run that marathon, it's okay. I, I still get to go to work the next day and live a life and eat what I want and everything like that. But when you stretch yourself and, and try and create a bigger life for yourself, it's going to cause you to get outside of your comfort zone. Um, and I find that it's only through real accountability and somebody maybe putting a, putting a mild foot up your rear end to push you along outside your comfort zone because it stinks going outside your comfort zone. I don't want to do that. It's no fun. It's, it's, it's not comfortable. <laughs> outside no. my comfort zone, you know? Um, so it's, it's, that, that's what accountability is there to do is to push you outside that group, uh, outside that zone a little bit. So, and I argued against it for so long. No, I can do mm -hmm. by myself. No, I can do by myself. Yeah, man. And you guys, it literally, I did a whole solo episode on this. It was not until I joined a mentor group and finally yeah. admitted that I couldn't do it by myself. And in eight months, I've grown more professionally and personally than I had in the previous probably two years. So Nice, nice. Uh, well, that, Jonathan, we can we can stop there if you like. Um, but I can also um, I, let me let me add another yeah uh, another add, layer just a little here. Bit more. We're, I'll bring it home, right? Yep. Um, yep. A lot of what I've talked about is about getting started, right? But you don't want to forget about what you want life to look like beyond getting started, right? Because we don't we got well, at some point we, we got to stop getting started, you know, and we got to like, you know, be we got to you got to hit step five at some point. And so I would, um, I would also say, when you talk about here are my goals, here's my business plan, and here's my timeline, right? Drop back and put like a vision together about what life looks like in year one, and then year three and year five for yourself, if you continue on this path. Year one is simply, okay, I've implemented this business plan, I've executed my timeline, and my goals are complete. This is what life looks like now, right? Then what I recommend you guys do is fast forward to year five, skip year three, and you, we'll get back to it. Skip your, skip your three and go to year five. And I've, Marianne Wells, Williamson said something brilliant. Marianne Williamson said that most people overestimate what they can get done in a year, but drastically underestimate what they could do in five years, right? We like put a man on the moon in just over five years, okay? Right. And when we didn't have the technology to get there, the five, the five years before that, there are phenomenal advances that could get made. I submit to you that anything can be done in five years. Um, if you are a zero asset holding real estate investor with the, with like, you know, a bunch of debt and a negative net worth, you could say, I want to own a thousand units in five years, right? That's possible. If you work your tail off, you bet you have to get a little lucky, but it's possible, right? And yep. so what? You try really hard to get there in the end at 700. I, I don't think you'd be, I don't think you'd be unhappy, right? So, I think that what you do is you want to sit down and talk about what you want life to look like five years from now, if you stay focused, if you drill into your business plan. And I think that I call it the magic wand question. What do you want? What would, what would be a perfect life five years from now? Like, you know, look at your current age, add five years and say, okay, at the age of 33, 45, 62, whatever it is, you know, at that age, I want, this is what I want life to look like and speak in terms of standing in that place. So I am now X amount of years. I've got this this is where I live. These are my assets. This is what my day-to-day -day looks like. This is what my holdings look like. This is my business. This is what I've built. Um, this is what cash flow I have. All these things, right? You want to go granular, talk about what a car you're driving, talk about whatever, whatever you got, right? Um, lay that out. And then, and that's more like the vision, but be clear on what business you have that's giving you the life that you have five years from now, okay? Now, then drop back to year three, because year three is the gap between where you're standing now and where you want to go. And year three is the most important one because it is the year five may be the unattainable, if you're like swimming in the ocean, Jonathan, and you're swimming towards the horizon, it might be that horizon that's all the way out that the sun's touching at the edge of the thing that you might not get to, right? That's year five. It might feel so far away that you know it might not be attainable to get there. It might not seem attainable to get there. Year three is the gap between now and then. And if you want to have a thousand units in five years, maybe year three is the is the point, the snapshot you look at where you've got the acquisitions and the asset management and the funding in place and the flow of investor capital coming to you where you can now lever up 
to get to that. Okay. Year three is a snapshot of what you have to build to get you to year five. Okay? That's where the hockey stick starts. Right? Yeah. One through three is, is the, is the flat part. And then you hit that handle year three and up you go. Up you go. It's exactly a great way to say it. I haven't looked at it that way, Jonathan. Thank you. It's where the hockey stick starts. And it's year one through three is with, man, I'm just working my tail off and not seeing many results. And in year three is when it starts to, ooh, look at this. I'm starting to feel this, you know, and look at all the, look at all that hard work paying off. Um, so that's like just your vision. And then obviously year one drops back to where, uh, where life would be if you just accomplish your goals, right? So you do those things and it'll start to become clear what team you need to have, what direction you'd be moving in, what market you should be focused on um, and that. And, and just be clear that, that also that you're, you may not be able to accomplish all these things by yourself. You're going to need a team, yep. you know, and, and it will start to appear to you what team members you need to draw in by year two, by the end of year one, um, who you need to enroll in your vision and who you need to, bring on board to help you build this, this, uh, this big machine here. So um, that that's the icing on top. And I, and I think I see too many companies uh, when I see companies operate, I can, I can tell you when I meet people and hear about their company uh, and I'm not judging them, Jonathan, I just can tell who's got a long-term vision and who doesn't, right? Like who's just doing deals just to hustle and grind and dabble and get a piece of that one check they get for doing that deal. And they're going to hustle and grind and find the next one. And versus who's building something that's successful, sustainable, long-term, right? And you can tell when you talk to them and you know what I'm talking about. You're shaking your head. Yes. You know what I mean, right? Oh yeah. People that are, big, people that are building a thing and then people that are just dabbling, right? And, and you want to be the one that's building a thing. You want to be building a, building a real estate uh, venture here, building something with cash flow, sustainability, longevity, you know? Absolutely. Because guys, the systems are what's going to get you through the ups mm -hmm. and downs of the market cycles, right? The last, listen, if you just started in the last five years, which includes me, um, you've enjoyed a really nice market, but we're getting to a point now where that is probably coming to an end in some degree. And, you know, creates It's just going to get different. In. It's a second, yes. it might not crash, but it's right. just, it's, the next five years are going to be very different than the last Correct. five. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. And so you need to have systems and things in place so that you can navigate this. Don't do it alone. Mm -hmm. Don't do no, do not, do not. Um, those are the secrets to six. I, I, they're, uh, they're, they're boring, Jonathan. Uh, you and I could have charged, we could have charged $10,000 for listening to this episode. By the way, Jonathan, just say your address. Those that are listening <laughs> that haven't, they, they could just mail you a check for $10,000 for this recording um, because we, we've given them uh, tons of, uh, uh, you know, just the road, the roadmap and, and there's, it, it's, these are obvious things, so but, obvious. but success is a lot more obvious than you think it is achieving it. It's just, are you willing to put in the work? You a know? thousand percent. And those listening, they're like, wow, this is literally what every person says. Like, yeah, we weren't here to give you a secret because it turns out there is no secret. The secret I is there that, is no secret. I joke about that. Like, oh, pay me 10 grand and I'll whisper the secret of real estate success in your ear. There is no secret. You know, Thanks it's just me. hard work and staying focused and, you know, setting goals and staying focused on them and, uh, and, and just putting one foot in front of the other and, you know, hard and just, and just working over and over and over again uh, towards your goals. So, yes. And don't be afraid of failure, too. That's another thing I want to put in oh, there. It's you the guys. best educator out there. Oh, a thousand percent. Yeah. It, that's what kept me on the sidelines for so long was being afraid to fail. And I, you know what, like, if you're not failing, you're not trying, yeah. I've made all the mistakes. You guys, I literally will have to redo a podcast because I forgot to hit record. Okay. So, and I, and it didn't happen until like 60 episodes in of doing these. So trust me, you'll, you'll, my heart just dropped. Cause I thought you were talking about this episode. <laughs> no, like, no, you and no. I are dropping some thunder, man. No way. No, it's not this episode. <laughs> Don't worry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but the reason but that I know there. it's, I know, yes, I know what you mean. Yeah. yeah. Is because I did that and now I won't make that mistake. So no. I, I, you know, I, I've had, you know, mountains of money stolen from me, Jonathan, either from small, small checks from contractors that are just smack on the wrist lessons. Um, and like in mid to high six figures, I've had that stolen from me too. Um, yeah. And uh, it's painful. It sucks. Uh, it, it, it hurt. I shed tears over it because um, I wasn't sure how we we're going to get over it. 
Um, but guess what? I got over it. Uh, I got through it and I got the money back and I uh, lived another day. And the, the only way that you fail in life really ever is by quitting, right? Um, that you can, I mean, you can get up in the right, you can get, if, if you're willing to get up again and get back in the ring and shake it off and try again, then you're going to, then you're going to win eventually, right? Cause you're going to let, you're going to learn, you're going to, you're, you're going to learn to juke, uh, when that right hook comes across the plate, you know, um, you're, you're going to learn what to do in response to things that happen in this business and how to approach it a little bit better the next time. Um, if you choose to quit, if Jonathan said, you know what, screw it, this is too hard. I didn't hit the record button. And so I just, I just, it's too much to do. Um, or if I said, geez, money got stolen from me. This is a sucky business. I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm out. Um, whatever it may be. If I had quit in those times, then I had lost. But because I shook it off, because he shook it off, right? We live another day, you know? And that's how you win is by, Absolutely. is by, okay, that's it. Shake it off. You know, uh, get back to my goals, get back to my business plan, get back to my timeline adjust it, tweak it, get more accountability, find a shoulder to cry on, shake it off and feel, feel bad for myself for 15 minutes. Um, and then, uh, and then get back to work. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Don't be afraid to cry. Yeah. You guys, we, I mean, listen, we've all cried Cried so. out, man. Yeah. <laughs> Love a good cry. Awesome. Well, to release we, it. this is another incredible episode of just such great insight that, um, you just can't end it at the 30 minute mark. So, uh, I love it. Um, but what are my favorites, final man? Five. I do have five questions that I ask all of my guests. So I'm very excited for your answers here. Um, what is the best advice you've gotten from a mentor? I just said it really about the quitting thing, but I mean, um, I, I'll give you two other ones is that don't, don't let your emotions get involved. And I, I I'm successful on that one about 50% of the time. Um, but if I, if I take my emotions out of it, then I typically make the right decision. Um, and that, so th that's probably, uh, the best one. The second one is just keep moving. Um, you, you know, if you achieve a certain level of success and you try and like, Oh, I'm going to rest when I hit this many units or when I achieve this, when I achieve that momentum brings about more, more momentum and, and, you know, momentum tends to solve problems too. And so, uh, keep moving and don't let your emotions get involved. And as I said before, don't quit. Those are, those are the, the best advice I've gotten. Absolutely. And, you know, we set those goals, but then once you, re you really can't wait for the next thing anyway. So yeah, once you have that momentum, um, what is it about your career that makes you feel like you're fulfilling your why? Because, because my why is to transform lives through real estate is to make the world a better place to, again, sorry to get hokey, but it is what it is. Um, so uh, my why is to make things better through what I do. Uh, in my business. And I know I'm doing that in residential housing. I, I've built playgrounds and I've seen the field that used to, that like I, I had somebody fight, guy to guy on an apartment building, find a heroin needle in a field um, and brought it to the property manager and said, what, you know, I, I, I got my, I, I can, I can afford to live here because my kid, you know, and they just, this, my kid found this thing and I, this is where I can afford to live is what it is. So he found a heroin needle laying in, laying in grass. Um, in that field later, and this is before we bought the place. I remember he brought, he brought it to the property management office and they were like, oh, sorry. In that field, six months later, once we bought the property and implemented our business plan, I built a playground, you know? Sweet. Um, and we got the knuckleheads out that were selling the stuff that went in that heroin needle and all that. Uh, that's all gone. And I went back and visited that property years later and I, I didn't say anything to him, but I saw that dad with his daughter and a bunch of other kids playing on that playground. So, oh, that's so awesome. Yeah, so, I love that. He and still lived there. Yeah. That's what's so great about uh, what yeah. we do. That we, so I know that we it just do. feels good just to make things better a little bit because things are going to get better on their own. It's only through business and implementation that they get better and, and that. And so I know that I get to do that. So I love that. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, favorite non-real estate or investment related book? Um, hmm. Non, you know what a good non-real estate book is? I haven't talked about it in a while. My wife uh, just picked it up again. Is the Power of Now, Eckhart Tolle. Oh, Eckhart Tolle, uh, great book. Um, I'll go there. I get to, I'll get to plug non-real estate related books. You know, I talk about rich dad poor dad enough. The Power of Now is a phenomenal book, and Absolutely. I think all, all people, people should that. read it because we spend a lot of our time not present in the moment in our brain, and the more in the moment you are, the more effective you can be. Oh, so true. Uh, if you could have any superpower, what would it be? Um, hmm. 
I, this, I, th- I think about this a lot. And those that know me through YouTube or whatever know I'm an enormous superhero fan. And I, as you see behind me, I got my DeRosa Group logo thing with Captain America it. Shield on there and stuff. He's my favorite superhero. Um, but he doesn't do the things that I, I probably would fly, you know, but it's kind of lame. Um, I looked at like, what if I could stop time, you know, um, to be able to stop time for a second so I can, you know, catch a breather or whatever. Um, that's, that's his superpower I thought would be kind of cool. Um, Absolutely. Like yeah. Doctor Strange almost. Yeah, like the Doctor Strange thing. Be invisible, but that's always kind of ske- that's always kind of sketchy and like slimy, you know, to do that. It'd be kind of cool for a little bit to hear what people really have to say, you know. Absolutely. Um, but uh be, I probably would go flying. Uh yeah, because things think uh, they just fly, it just is so cool to be able to fly, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. So that would be my superpower. I love it. Yeah. Um, last one. What's the best way for people to get a hold of you and learn more? Um, couple things, couple ways. Derosa Group, my website, derosagroup.com, D E R O S A group.com, derosagroup.com is my website. Uh, they can also look me up on Instagram at the Matt Faircloth. Uh, apparently, the other Matt Faircloth already has that one. So just the Matt Faircloth, uh, M A T T F A I R C L. There's another Matt Faircloth. There's multiple Matt Faircloths. I would try to find him. I, I thought about it. I'm friends with them on Facebook. I'm friends with them. All. I went and friended every, you guys should all do that. Find, find the people on Facebook that have your name and friend them, right? Because they're going to like, oh my God, it's another Jonathan K, you know, Kitani, right? Right. So there there's, all, there's, there's another one of all of us. So I'm, I'm Facebook friends with all the Matt Faircloths that would, that would be friends with me. So the, I went to Virginia Tech for college. There is a Matt Faircloth that also went to Virginia Tech. That's fascinating. I remember when I, was in, when I was in tech sales and we'd be looking someone up looking for a specific, you know, uh, Brian Smith. And then there's another Ryan Smith who does the exact same thing at a different company. And I'm like, you two need to meet each other. I know you're both because I sold a financial software. Mm -hmm. So seeing like two people, same name, both CPAs or both VPs of finance. I'm like, this is Weird. It's like the vortex, right? Vortex. Would it, it's like bizarro. Like would would like the the the, the space time continuum collapse if they got to meet each other? You I know, say, I mean, right? I don't know. It's possible. Um, but yeah, there's a, there's many other Matt Fairclaws uh, apparently. Uh, the there is a but anyway, there's it wasn't Matt Fairclaw. There's a Lock Faircloth that was a senator in North Carolina. But there's a Faircloth Highway too. There's a Faircloth Zoo in North Carolina too. A lot of that. Anyway, uh, the Matt Faircloth is my Instagram handle. Please check us out there and look at my uh, the link in my bio. There's all kinds of cool stuff. You can pick up a copy of my book. Um, I teach a boot camp for bigger pockets on multifamily. You guys can check that out too there, um, and uh, all kinds of other cool stuff. So, cool. the end. We'll link uh, link the website in the show notes. Make it super easy, Matt. Please do. Incredible. Thank you so, so much Thanks, for all Jonathan. Of your insight. I enjoy your uh, interview style, your chat style, man. Let's do this again sometime, man. We can, we can solve some more problems, you know? And we did <laughs> record this, so we won't have to do this yes! one again. So. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. I hope you really enjoyed it. Listen, I know it's cliche and you hear it all the time, but please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel so you know when the next video is coming out. Even though this is technically a daily podcast, you know it's coming out the next day. Uh, We have a ton of content coming your way. So please like and subscribe. It helps a ton. Leave comments. We'd love to know what you guys think. And uh, we will see you on the next one. Thanks so much.